The arrival of Dolby Atmos Music has injected a fresh wave of excitement and inspiration into the world of music production. Drawing from my experience mixing in Dolby Atmos and the knowledge that I've gained learning from Capitol Studio staff engineers, I'm thrilled to share some techniques that will empower you to create timeless Dolby Atmos mixes. The first tip I'd like to discuss is keeping the process simple. Since I'm starting my Atmos mix from stereo mix stems, the original vision has already been established. The processing goal here in the Atmos world isn't to rethink the entire mix. It's simply to convey the artist's original intent into a new format. This approach is the most important tip I can share with you. Just because we can pan these elements around a room and play pinball wizard doesn't mean we should. Keep that in mind when you're trying to deliver something timeless for your clients. I'm not sure about you, but the last thing I want my clients to experience many years from now are feelings or comments like, dang, that was one of the early Atmos mixes. And over-processing or missing this timeless strategy will quickly put you in that category. Remember, the goal here is to honor the original intent of the song, but experience it in a new format. Okay, let's move over to Pro Tools and discuss some LFE tips. The first two I wanted to discuss is the send to the LFE channel. As you can see in the session here, I've got a drum stem and two bass stems. Those are all being sent to the LFE channel at right around minus 15. I've found that minus 15 is a good starting point, but from there, use your own taste. <clears throat> and then if we come down to the LFE channel itself here, this is where I'm monitoring it. I like to insert a low pass filter um, on something like Fab Filters Q3 and natural phase mode, right around 100 hertz. So you do that here. If you're not familiar with um, Fab Filter Q3, great plugin. You gotta remember this LFE is full range, so it's good to filter out anything that is being sent from a stem. In that case, like my drum stem, I'm filtering out all those symbols and, and any high-end or mid-range information that's going to that LFE channel. Chances are you're getting hit with a lot of low end. Well, again, since that LFE is full range, it's better to cheat your LFE to less than more. And then from there, follow your instincts and in dialing that in. Okay, let me show you how you can use a track preset inside of Pro Tools to help you pan those foundational objects really quickly. So if uh, move over the DAW here, I wanna focus on this lead vocal. There's no panning information on this track right now, so if I reveal the automation lane, you can see it just by default, it shows volume. Well, if I pull this drop down, down and go to panning and then over to all pan types, you can see this default view of the Atmos built-in panner. There's a ton of automation opportunities here. Well, for me, I don't need all that information. So what I have done is created a track preset that shows the four most used lanes, or at least the four lanes that I find that I've used most um, to get my Atmos mix up and running. Well, I'm gonna right click on this track name, go over to recall track preset, and then find uh, my initials inside the uh, contextual menu here. As you can see, I've named this track preset the Atmos Spill Pan. Well, once I click on that, you'll see the track view will change. It reveals the front rear uh, position left and right, as well as the height left and right. So again, once I wanna start panning these foundational elements around and, and begin to build my Atmos mix, I try to get all the information out of the way and keep it simple. So creating that track preset that shows the lanes that I use most has been really helpful. When the time comes to reference your Atmos mix, there's a lot of information to consider. The most important part of this is your client's experience. If you're working with a client for the first time in Dolby Atmos, I'd encourage you to invite them to your mix room to hear a full experience before ever sharing a binaural mix with them. This is a great opportunity for you to ask your clients what consumer products they own and to also make sure that those products are Atmos capable. I cannot stress this one enough. I'll never send a binaural mix to my clients as a first Atmos impression. There are a lot of Atmos capable rooms popping up. <clears throat> Recently, I met a client who was from the Chicago area at Sweetwater to review some Atmos mixes. Sweetwater happened to be the middle ground between Detroit and Chicago. And that was a great way for us to meet and review mixes. 
The client was blown away with what they heard, and the great thing is that since it's just a playback session, the studio time isn't as expensive as renting the studio for recording or mixing. So long story short, don't be afraid to reach out to a studio and see if you could schedule a playback session. I hope you found this information helpful. If so, please hit that like and subscribe button for me, and we'll catch you on the next one. Take it easy.